But look what, what happened on the screen. What, what did we just learn? Can someone just shout it out? You can, you can shout in church. It's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. What did we see? A backpack drive, right? People did what? They gave. And it, what did it do? What's the result? It made a difference in the life of a student. Right? I think that's what God is calling our church to. We've had a beautiful service. We had uh, youth at the care tables praying for people. We had youth helping in the worship team. They were using their gifts and their unique talents to make a difference in the church. You know why that's possible? It's because they're connected. I think that's one of the things we struggle most in our lives is to connect. Connection with our spouse, maybe. She gave me the cold shoulder. She, she don't want to talk to me. Well, brother, did you say something crazy like, hurry up, woman, or say something, call her woman? <laughs> well, he don't, he don't show that he loves me. Did you try to meet him halfway? I think those are the things that we struggle with is connecting to maybe even our environments that we live in. And today, I want to encourage you. We're going to be talking about connection and what that could possibly look like, not only to receive something, but to give something today. In Ephesians 4, 16, it, it talks about this when it comes to the church and the body of Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself. Let's pray. God, we are so grateful and thankful that we get to come to a church where we can connect not just to receive something, but to give our gift, to give something today. Teach us how we can, can connect. Teach us how to be open to what you have for us, how we can develop our gifts. I thank you for this beautiful church and the ministry that they have ministered to me in my life. And we thank you for them. Continue to bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Does everybody have a cell phone in here? I know some people don't. Some people might be a little young for a cell phone. Everybody has a cell phone. Can you just wave it at me? You can take your cell out in church. I know you're already on Facebook, some of you, Marketplace. I know. I see it. God's been speaking to me. <laughs> Listen. Sometimes you check your Instagram or post like, oh, pastor is so great. And that all, you're able to upload stuff to the internet through something called wireless internet, right? We call it Wi-Fi. You're able to look and connect and send information, update your status, send a Snapchat. Worship's so great, hallelujah. <laughs> you know how you do during worship. You got your video down here, you're, and people are like, oh my gosh, they're so spiritual on the internet. <laughs> Don't front, we know. It's okay, we love you. I subscribe to your channel, I know, okay? <laughs> and that only works through Wi-Fi. Let me tell you a story real quick. When I first started working in church was in 2006, about 2011, I didn't have a cell phone plan, but I had a phone, an iPhone. It was a very archaic iPhone, and it had Wi-Fi. And so it didn't make phone calls because I didn't have a plan, but I used an app to make Wi-Fi calls. It was so basic. <laughs> Anytime I was in the Wi-Fi, hello, hi, how are you? Mm, hi. Very nice to meet you. Mm, what do you need? Really? I never knew that. But when I was out of the Wi-Fi, Boop. Hello. Hello. I got to connect to Starbucks. <laughs> I got to connect to Krispy Kreme, right? Do you guys have Wi-Fi here? Do you? No? Do you have Wi-Fi? No? And it was cumbersome. So funny story, I worked at the church. So anytime Pastor Mike would try to get a hold of me outside of the Wi-Fi in the church, he couldn't get a hold of me. And anytime I needed his help for something, Hello, pastor? Help, I'm stuck. My car broke down. <laughs> nope, he couldn't come out and help me. And a lot of our lives are like that even in the church. Sometimes when we're here, we're semi-connected. Sometimes we're not connected. Sometimes in our lives out there, we're never connected to the church. No one knows about my life here in the church. Oh, hallelujah. But you're at work, you stay. Get out of my office. Like you're mean. You're all, <laughs> right? But the purpose is that we allow our lives from here, make it out there. Because we, we, we like to stay disconnected. We like to stay disconnected because we don't want people to know our business. Am I right? If I'm right, just say, okay, yeah. If it hits you, say, yeah, okay. You can talk in church, it's fine. Because 
When you say yeah, I'm saying yeah with both arms. Yup, that's me. Sometimes I like to just come in and keep everybody at a distance, right? But God is calling us to connect. Just like the Wi-Fi, it's usually out of range. Sometimes when I decide to push people away or not get fully involved in church and the things that are happening, I'm disconnected. Things come up in our lives and we're like, how come, this is, how come nobody's here to help me? Did you let anybody know? Right? You cannot expect what you do not express. This is going to save your marriage. It's going to save your every relationship. It's saving my marriage. Even yesterday, I think my wife should have read my mind about certain things, but she didn't. Because I, you cannot expect what you do not express. And what you expect, you must inspect. Okay, that's free. You can have that. That's free. <laughs> this is why the Bible tries to tell us, listen, you need to be open. You need to communicate. You need to give information, but receive information. You're part of a church. I need you. I'm just going to say that flat out. I need you. I need your help. I can't do things on my own. You have gifts and talents that I don't have. You have connections that I don't have. You have insight I do not have or do not possess. I need you. And you need each other. You need a family. You need a church that will help you along the way. But you also have something to give, your skills and your talents, to help other people along the way. It's so important that we were never designed or created to live alone, to be disconnected from each other. I know we live in an individualistic society. I'm a self-made man. I'm self-made, everybody. You can laugh at me. I'm self-made. That's a lie. It's not the truth. I've had people help me along the way to get me right here where I stand. I am not alone. I'm not disconnected. I was designed to live in a community. Let's travel in our minds. When was the, when was the best time in your life? Was it by yourself or was it with a group of people? By yourself? Everybody who thinks the best time in their lives was by themselves, raise their hand. Everybody who thinks it was the best time in their lives when they were with people, raise their hand. Birthday parties are fun by yourself, right? Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. You're crying in the light of your kitchen. <laughs> Between the door, oh, nobody loves me. How come nobody bought me flowers? Because nobody knew you liked flowers. Sorry. <laughs> How come nobody celebrated me? Nobody even knew it was your birthday. Well, I told somebody, who'd you tell? The internet? People aren't examining Facebook like that got to tell somebody, right? Paul the Apostle teaches us that it's better to be connected in Ephesians chapter 4. He's the guy who wrote, the, wrote this part of the Bible in, in Ephesians. His name was Paul the Apostle, and he says this to us as he's in prison. He says in Ephesians 4, 1, he says, as a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling which you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient Bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. We can use some peace this time. <laughs> There's one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is over all, through all, and in all. So during this time, Paul's in prison. And it's sad He's under arrest. He can't participate in all the fun activities. No, no birthdays. Happy birthday to Paul. He's stuck in prison. So he writes this letter to the church in Ephesus and he says, listen, listen, I need you to stay connected. I need you to stay connected to a community. Maintain the unity through peace. Make every effort to keep peace with each other. Keeping peace doesn't mean just saying, okay. No, it's bringing what you have. Say, hey, this is where I see it. This is how I see things. And then you bring, this is how I see things, where we differ. And when you love somebody, you're willing to walk that journey with them. You say, okay, you didn't like what I said. Yeah, I didn't like what you said. So how can I change? But we have to be humble enough, right? So it tells us to be humble enough, be patient and gentle. You can't be rough with everybody. This is something I'm learning as a father, a husband. You can't just be rough. Come on, let's go. We're doing this. No, sometimes you say, hi. It's great to see you this morning. Could, would you be able to, and in 10 minutes, come this way? Thank you. So you have to be gentle because you catch more flies with honey than vinegar, right? Mama always said that. 
So Paul's trying to teach them, hey, this is how you interact with the church. This is how you interact with people. See, Paul in this moment is just like that kid who has lunch detention and everybody's outside playing basketball. And he's like, guys, I'm right here. So he's telling them, listen, I can't be with you, but I need you to know to maintain peace with each other. What he tries to get them to understand is that what unites them is so much more important than what separates them. What unites them is so much more important than what separates them. In our crazy climate, I'm not even going to go there. You know what I'm talking about. The people on TV doing too much, all of them, every last one of them. They're trying to divide the church. Trying to divide people. To make you look, make you look at somebody and say they're an animal. They're not a real human being. And when we turn that corner, we can commit violence in ways that show us what the last century was like, World War II. Yeah, because we don't view people as human beings. But when we begin to view the church and our church members as people, we begin to love them as Christ loves them. They have a home. They have a life. They have all these things that are going on in their lives. I can begin to see them as Christ sees them. See, Paul continues this, and he says, listen, I got to tell you a secret. I got to tell you this one thing in verse 7. But each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teachers to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. He goes intense here. He says, listen. This is what Christ did for us. He gave us gifts. He gave these apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. And sometimes we exalt those gifts, which is they're very, they're important for the equipping of the saints. But we need you. Those gifts don't work without people. I can stand up here all day in a prophetic gift and, oh, but if there's nobody in the room, what does it matter? It's a waste of my time. But when there's people here, I can give my gift and they give me their gift back. Believe it or not, church is not a place just about going here to get something. But it's here to give something. You are here to give something. See, I need you. Pastor, you don't need me. You're doing fine all by yourself. Nope. I'm not good. The Bible says it's not good for a man to be alone. I know he's talking about marriage, but it's not good for us to be alone and try to do life by ourselves. Church is built on the fact that we need you. I need you to turn to somebody and say, I need you. I said, turn to somebody and say, I need you. (laughs) Turn to the next person and say, I need you. I don't need you. You were nasty this morning. Uh Uh-huh. God's going to be fixing some folk this morning. I need you. I need you. I can't do this without you. I understand that you might be here because you need something that I have or prepared. But you preach to me a sermon every single week. When we sing these worship songs and I hear the voices of you guys saying, saying, you will always surround me. I hear and say, Pastor John, you can keep going. God's going to surround you when you need it. God's going to be here. I hear the witnesses that they sing. And so that my life can be changed and transformed. I always am going to need the church. I'm going to need you. The church has transformed my life. When I had educational struggles and I thought I was stupid and I couldn't go back to school and all of these things, I had a church that said, man, you're pretty smart. You can go back to school. And that encouraged me. I had a church who helped me find my wife. I'm sitting in the drum cage playing on a Sunday morning, hallelujah, somebody. (laughs) And I'm sitting and I see this beautiful Puerto Rico word, I love you. She's sitting there. And she's just, and I'm like playing. I'm supposed to be all focused on the Lord. I see, I'm like, <laughs> praise the Lord. Ain't God good today? I say it. I say that God is good. 
And then I asked her out, and then we started dating, and then we have a beautiful baby boy, John Mark Daniel Ferguson Jr. Like, it's because of the church. It's because of the church. It's because because I had a pastor that says, hey, you got to have some confidence. Put them, put them shoulders back when you walk. You got you to gotta have some confidence. You want to be married? Yes. That's not God's choice. That's your choice. Okay. And I pursued that. Every blessing that I've had, when I didn't have a car, didn't know how to drive, I had people in the church teach me how to drive. When I didn't have any money in my pocket, I had people say, God bless you, and just give me, what? As a young man, before I became a pastor, I'm not talking about while I was a pastor, before I became a pastor, when I struggled and I said, God, I don't know if I, should, if I have anything worth giving, I had people come to me and say, God has something for you. Come on, young man, step it up. Come on, you can become better than what you think you are. Without the church, I could not stand here today. Even this morning, I couldn't stand here today. Because I need you. I need you. I need your gifts. I need your words of encouragement. And so do the people next to you. Some people need uh, uh, vocational skills. They need different skills that you have. Maybe you might be an electrician, right? A welder, right? A mechanic. There's people, young men, that need a father to say, hey, come on, young blood, let me show you how to do these things. Come on over here, let me show you how to be a man. Put the tie, this is how you put a tie on, this is how you set up for a job interview, this is how you balance your checkbook, this is how you do X, Y, and Z. They need you. The message today is about you not sitting on your gifts. Don't sit on the giftings that God put inside of you. You must leave this life empty with all your giftings, all your ideas, all your concepts out of you. You've been sitting here questioning, well, God, what can I do with what I got? Put it in his hand. Put it in his hand. Say, God, this is what I bring to the table, the struggles, all these things, but I also bring these gifts. Here, God. See, because when we begin to give our gifts and use it for each other, this is what Ephesians 4, 14 says, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by cunning and craftiness of people in their deceit and scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. From him, the whole body is joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. What he's saying to become joined and jointed. This is, this, do I got anybody who knows what Voltron is in here? Any 80s babies? Any, Right? So in our form, the head, right? We know Jesus Christ is the head, but it's like that Voltron. God is trying to get us to move and trying to get us to move in a direction. But we're like, no, I'm not moving because I'm not using my gifting. God wants us to get and become mature. Does anybody feel a little immature in their life? I can be a little immature. Things in my life, areas that haven't fully matured, maybe financially, they haven't matured in your life. Maybe socially, they haven't matured in your life. That's why the church is here to teach you. This is a safe space where you can learn, practice skills, and say, okay, now let's adjust to become fully mature in the things of God. So that when a crisis happens in your life, you're not like, oh, I can't. No, you're like, okay, let's call the brothers in the church, let's pray. And you can stand firm in what God has said. We all have a role to play in the church. What can you do in the church today? I'm not just talking about the physical building, but I'm talking about the global church. I'm also talking about the communities that you live in together. Some of you live next door to each other and don't talk to each other. I'm not getting your business, but how could you be a blessing to your community? The backpack drive, how could we triple, double the numbers of how many backpacks we can do and, and reach the, the, the community? Because the church does it, right? How could we do that? Every single person is important, like your body. Every part of your body is important. Some people are like, no, there's this thing in your arm that's not important, and then you have a tailbone that's not important. No, no, everything in your body is important. It's important. If I didn't have certain body parts, could I function properly? It's very difficult. I can kind of adjust and manage. And I feel like a lot of times the church globally is limping because people aren't in place. People aren't where they need to be. But I'm just a pinky toe. Have you ever tried when your pinky toe broke? Have you ever tried walking? <laughs> it's difficult, right? But when it's, when it's healed and it's right, right where it needs to be, it's easy to walk. It's easy to move. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you is that you need to get in place. I know it's a hard word, get in place. 
You've been sitting on your gifting for too long. I'm not just talking about this church, but I'm talking about the global church. God needs your gifting. God wants to use you right where you're at with all the issues. But pastor, my life is a mess. Come messy. <laughs> all right? We'll work it out. We'll, we'll help you. No, sister, don't do that. Don't scream at the, the people in the cafe. Come on, sister. Don't yell at the usher. We love you, sister. You have a gifting. Let's help you. It's like this phone. We're like this phone a lot of times. You know, we can connect to the internet. We can connect to the church. You know, we connect through Wi-Fi. But oftentimes, we can be in range of the Wi-Fi and shut it off. You're going to see a video real quick pop up. Boom. Goodbye. I shut off the Wi-Fi. I'm not talking to you, sister. I'm going to put on the do not disturb next. And I'm just going to, don't bother me. I came for a word in season. Stay away from me, brother. I don't have time for all that. <laughs> we keep people at a distance and at arm length, knowing that they need something. Why would that person walk up to you and try to talk to you? Because you might have something that they need. They might be struggling with their kid at home, but you've been a dad for 50 years and you already know how to raise good men and good children. And they came up to you and you're like, mm, I don't have nothing. To, mm. But God is calling us today to turn the Wi-Fi back on. Take that do not disturb off, be interrupted in your life because guess what? You are going to live an unfulfilled life if you cannot be interrupted. The greatest things in my life have happened because I was interrupted. Healings that I've seen is because I stopped when I, oh, I just came to the hospital to pray for one person, but I ended up praying for like five or six and people get healed because I can be interrupted. God is looking for a people that can be interrupted and say, can I use you today to affect the church? If I didn't have all the, all the people in the church, I can't stand here today. If I didn't have Jesus when he had the flock family, hip-hop, I, I wouldn't be here because I needed hip-hop in the church. I was 16. I remember him on the stage rocking it. And it encouraged me. It encouraged me to stay planted in the church without those things. I wouldn't be here today. I couldn't be here today without family church down on 10 East Main in the rough part, and gang members, and all the fun stuff, learning and, and, and growing in my gifting. I couldn't do it without the church. The thing about when we don't stay connected is we lose stability in our lives. We get tossed to and fro. Even in my own life, as I prepare sermons, I run them by Brother Vincent, I run them by Pastor Josh, some of the fellas in the building, I run it by them. There's moments where I could step into heresy really quickly. Well, well the Holy Spirit, God's like, you know, Steam, ice, and water. No, he's not. That's modalism. That's heresy. No, Pastor John, don't say that. <laughs> right? So I need them to help me move forward and teach a solid, sound message. In Romans 12, verse 4, it says this. Just as our bodies have many parts, each part has a special function. So it is with the body of Christ. We are many parts of one body. We all belong to each other. No man is an island. And I hate it when my mom used to tell me this as a kid. Oh, please don't tell me that. No man is an island. You can't just do you when you come to church. I'm just here for me. No, you're here for we. You're here for we. I need your gifting. I need you to speak up. I need you to talk to me. I need you, brother. When we go fishing, I need you. I need you to help me to put the hook on. I need you. I need different people in the church. Here's the first point, and I want you to write this down. You are needed if you want to be. Well, the church is going to limp if you don't help out. The church can go so much further if you got involved, if you made a difference. Each member is essential. It relies on each other to, to function properly. We all contribute to the growth and the unity of the church. We can choose to be needed. If we want to, we can turn on all the opportunities and get connected to the Wi-Fi of the church. I want to tell you this, that I said this before, but a life interrupted by God is greater than one that cannot be disturbed. Can God interrupt you this morning? Can God interrupt you and say, hey, it's time to stop sitting on your blessing you know what I'm talking about. Your blessing and do something and give something. Well, it's too much and I don't have time and it's too, it's too yes, it's going to cost you something. But a life uninterrupted is not worth one worth living. If you think of a hospital, none of the functions in the hospital can happen without each other. 
You can't have a doctor without a nurse. You can't have the hospital doesn't run without a janitorial staff. And it does not run without administration, handling logistics, souls from the church. Many times you can look at the church and say, well, I could do that. There's people in this room right now are probably telling, well, pastor, I can preach a better message than you. Then why aren't you? I can play drums better than her. Then why aren't you? I can sing better. Oh, then why aren't you? I can do kids ministry. Then why aren't you? We need you. Number two, stay connected to your network. We all have different roles, but we must stay connected. We must stay in our lane. If you can't sing, please don't audition for the worship team. <laughs> Maybe just, okay, you can, but you may not make it. And don't get offended and leave the church because they say, no, you can't really sing, sister. <laughs> Brother, you can't really sing. But do what God has called you to do. Use your gifts and your talents. If you can do something very well, like cook, use your talents. It's because of that I've had so much blessing. There's a lady that works in the cafe. She's a, sh a professional chef. And there's one day I'm putting a meal together for my wife for, for Mother's Day. And I, and I asked her, well, you know, this is what I'm doing. She's like, have you ever done this thing? Make like an au jus with the thing. I said, what, a au jus? What are you talking about? <laughs> and, she sh and she told me the process and how to make it better. And I learned that process. And I chefed it up for my wife. And I took the juice and put it on the, right on the steak. And my wife was like, that's the best meal I've ever had. Ever had? Ever have? Ever? Ever, ever? <laughs> like, wait, what did that lady do with her little contribution that seemed this big? She shrank in my marriage. My wife starts looking at me like this. <laughs> start, start, start. Ooh, honey, you're the best ever. You're the best cook. She shrank in my marriage. Confidence, different things. Don't ever think that your gift is too small. It can be a blessing. It can transform somebody's life and maybe even end up in a sermon one day, <laughs> right? You see, in Hebrews 10.25, it says this, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much, so, uh, so much the more as you see the day approaching, this day of evil approaching, right? It seems rough and it's crazy, but don't forsake coming together with other believers. I know sometimes it's difficult to, to, to come into the church and maybe, but reach out to us. If you're watching online, reach out to us. We wanna put you in a community of believers who can strengthen you. When you feel low, they can say, brother, you can make it. Sister, you can make it. God has a plan for your life. When you don't know what to do and, or, or where to turn, you can turn to the church and we can pray for you. There's people that have prayed me through so much in my life here in the church. Because I've been a part of the church, I had people to say, can, can I pray for you? How's your life doing? How's your relationship with your wife and your kids? Uh-oh, I got to change. I got to make adjustments. They help me move forward. See, because they understand this, this third and final point. I'm not just here for me, but for we. I'm not just here for me, but I'm here for we. I don't just stand this, on this pulpit and this platform for me. I stand for us. You see... In 1 Corinthians 12, 26, it says, if one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. In Galatians 6, 2, it says, bear one another's burdens. It's so fulfilling the law of Christ. When we struggle, we all struggle. When one struggles, we all struggle. When one is hurt, we all hurt. We stand with each other. When someone is going through a tough time, we cook and we make meals for each other. We give words of encouragement. We put a card when someone's struggling financially that you know about. You put a little $5, $10 in a card and maybe send it to them. Because each person has enough in their hand to benefit the entire church. There's an uh, African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. We're going together. Because we want to go far. We want to, we want to be here for another hundred years if Jesus doesn't come back. As a church who loves their community, who loves each other, they will know you are my disciples by your love for what? One another. See, you don't understand and you don't, you don't know my story. You don't know where I came from and you don't know what's happened to me in my life. There were days when I felt like quitting and giving up on myself and there were brothers in the church that said, nope, you don't get to. There's days where struggles happen in my life I didn't get to quit because someone pulled me when I needed support, when I needed the love of a mother. There's been mothers in the church that say, oh, pastor, let me fix your collar. Let me make sure you're looking all right. Let me take care of you. And that's what the church is supposed to be, 
a family, a place that tries to help one another move forward in your life. It wasn't until I got connected and got a cell phone connected to a network, I was able to make calls internationally and nationally and be able to receive text messages and be able to send text messages. And just same as the church, if you don't get connected to the church, your range is cut short. You can't reach as many people as you wanted to if you stay disconnected from the church. I want to let you know that your gift will make room for you. That as you present your gift, God will open up doors of opportunity. He will bless you. He will keep you. You're going to see his face shine upon you. See, the church needs you. Yesterday we were at this wonderful, beautiful apple orchard, and we were picking apples, and I would bring my son JJ up to pick an apple, and sometimes he would pick one, and it was rotten. Why? Because the fruit stayed too long on the tree. Your gift is staying too long inside of you and not shared. It's going to rot inside of you. Sorry, that seems a little rough, but I'm telling you the truth. When you give your gifts, God is able to build them up and transform them and change them and use them in different ways. I thought I only had a percussion musical gift, but but I said, God, take what I have, change me, make me, mold me. And I'm standing here today preaching. I just play triangle. But I'm standing here preaching today, sharing a message of Jesus Christ to inspire you to, to come on. Come on, you can do it, you can make it. Because your life will be so much better if you use your gift to help somebody else today. You might be in here and you feel disconnected. Disconnected like nobody sees me, nobody knows me. You cannot expect what you do not express. Come. Become known. But you don't know my struggle. So what? So what? Not saying that I don't care about your struggle. You struggle. Okay. Me too. I struggle. Well, you don't know the things I think about. Okay. You don't know what I think about. Okay. You struggle. You don't know where I've been. Okay. Come together. See, there's programs here at the church that will help you move forward in your life. You may be here and saying, well, what's my next step, Pastor? Your next step is, if you haven't taken FAM Foundations, take FAM Foundations. That's a program that is designed to help us discover our giftings, but also a place to serve here in the local church, but then take those giftings and bring it to the furthest, most regions in the world. The second environment that you can connect to is Celebrate Recovery. Well, I don't have those types of problems. No, 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 you have those types of problems. And I got some CR people in here this morning that are proud because God transformed their life, because they got honest and open. And when they tell their story in group, when I'm sitting in a group and and the brothers tell their story, it inspires me to keep going. They're making it. I can make it. When I tell my story, it inspires them to keep going, not to give up, not to quit, not to throw in the towel. We need to encourage each other. I use my gift in that time to be able to help people. Another thing is connect groups, community groups, connect groups. If you need to find some friends, the Bible says to be friendly. Don't come to church like this. You, I know you have to sometimes have that for outside or whatever, it'd be tough. But in here, put a smile on. Hi, how you doing? Good morning. It's great to see you. Become friendly. Join a community group. People who have same interests, like playing golf, like hanging out, playing basketball, fishing. Community group. And another way that we can connect. You might be here today and say, hey, Pastor John, I don't know this Jesus that creates a family of people that look like this. But I want to be part of that family of God. I want to have salvation. I want to move forward in my life. I want to receive uh, uh, this gift of salvation. I'm not giving you a promise that your life is going to instantly become easier. But it becomes better when you're with people who can pray for you and love you. I want to invite you into the family of God this morning. And we pray a prayer together as a family, and it goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just as I am, and I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me, to rise again, to bring me new life. Jesus, I believe that you are Lord, and I receive your gift of salvation. 
In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, come on, give it up. If you never received Jesus to come into your life or make him Lord of your life, I want you to raise your hand so we can celebrate you as a family today. Come on, raise your hand. If you never prayed that prayer before, you can raise your hand. Is there anybody in, in here? I see a hand. Keep your hand up. Wave at me. 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 Okay, we got some over there. Come on. Anybody? Anybody else? Oh, come on right there. Oh, yes! Yes! Anybody else? Anybody else? Our care team members are, are coming up and down the aisles. There's some people back there, care team. They're coming up and down the aisles to give you a special seven-day devotional that's going to help you throughout your life. That's going to help you through your, your, your days in becoming a Christian, your first seven days. There's also a book called Welcome Home at the Welcome Center. If you're on the fence and, and you, know, you know what, you might have prayed that prayer but not raise your hand, fill out a connect card. We'd love to see it. Say, hey, I just want to know more about this Jesus. God is here for you. He loves you. And can we just stand together on our feet? I don't want to pray a blessing. I know some of you in here have been sitting on your gift for so long. And you're saying, God, can you use me? Can you use a person like me? Can you use somebody that struggles? Somebody that doesn't think they're worthy? And the answer is yes. He can use somebody like you if you let him. And if you want God to use you and say, you know what, I want to use my gifts in the church. I want to do something different. There's tables outside. You can sign up for different things. But as a sign to the Lord, I want you to raise your hands and say, God, if you can use anybody, use me today. Lord, we come to you just as we are. We don't have any uh, tricks or, or any of those things, God. But if you can use somebody like me. If you can use these people, use them, God. Take them, make them, mold them. I come against the voice of the enemy that tells them that they're not enough right now in the name of Jesus. I come against the work of the enemy that tries to deter them from using their gift that will transform the world. I thank you, Lord, that you continue to bless them and keep them. Increase their gift. As they use it, add more to it. Lord, as we go from this place, I thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, have your way we receive from you today. As we go from here, Lord, we, these people are blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed where they come and where they go. I thank you that they're the head and not the tail above, only never beneath. Increase them today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.